Hello, hello. Today I will be bringing you one of the most interesting uh, new German deities in my opinion, which is the Z23, which is the tier 8 German DD. Now, of course, being tier 8 makes it very interesting uh, in multiple ways because it will be looked at from a competitive point of view quite early, since, of course, T8 is where clan wars, team battles, ranked seasons, usually all the competitive stuff takes place, and uh, this ship will probably have a spot in the competitive meta. In fact, I'd be quite surprised if it doesn't. Now, first of all, running a 15-point captain on it uh, with the concealment module, you can reach a 6.2 kilometer conceal, which is quite good. It's not as good as Benson, which reaches 5.8, 5.9, but it's very, very close to being in the same neighborhood. It's close enough to be competitive. The 300 meters, yes, it might be a bit annoying, but it's not going to be the end of the world. On the other hand, however, the HP pool on it is amazing. As you can see, I'm, I have 19.5k HP. Now, this is without running Survivability Expert. So, it only has 100 HP less than the Tashkent, and uh, it beats out the Benson running survivability expert. Benson with survivability expert has 18.6k and this one has 19.5 without the perk. If you were to run survivability expert on this thing, then we're talking about some serious HP. That's what 3.2k added on, so what 22.7k HP that you could potentially have on this thing. So very, very tanky compared to the Benson. However, turn radius. 680 meters, uh, not nearly as maneuverable as the Benson, which has a fantastic 570 meter turn, uh, turn radius. Uh, the rudder shift is roughly the same, 4.5 seconds versus 4 seconds. The speed, almost the same. Benson is one knot faster. Benson does 38 knots, this one does 37. Pretty much in the same ballpark in that thing, though. The only thing that... The, it beats the Benson significantly in HP, but the Benson beats it in turn radius. So pretty close in, in overall. And now, the AA is pretty close to the Benson's base stats in terms of how much DPS you can pump out, but it has no defensive AA. It of course has Hydra instead. So no defensive AA while still having fairly low uh, actual raw DPS numbers means that this is, this, and of course the quite wide turning circles, means that this ship will without a doubt be a pretty juicy target for carriers. In fact, you can expect to be focused by carriers, and this one will, of course, need help in dealing with it. Because a good carrier cross torping you with a 680 meter turning circle means that uh, you can very easily, well, not very easily, but quite easily be struck out by a very good carrier cross torping you. Less of an issue in random battles where there's not that many, but in competitive, certainly something to notice. The torps, on the other hand, are pretty goddamn great. Uh, the base damage, well, first of all, you saw me land three torps on this Yamato. First of all, the concealment on these torps is 1.4 km, which is, of course, fantastic. Um, they are 2x4, aka 8 torps, They're exactly the same as the T10 torps with 14.4k base damage. They are run at 66 knots, you have a 9.5 km range, and... Uh, the cooldown on them is 90 seconds. Now compare this to Benson's 9.2 km torps and the fact that Benson with running the torpedo reload mod, uh, perk has a 110 second reload. In fact, if you would run the torpedo reload perk, I'm not running it right now, but if you would run it, you would have an 81 second torpedo reload. So we are talking about uh, the Benson having almost 50% longer, yeah, pretty, getting, no, not quite, but 81 seconds versus 110 not quite 50 of course that was okay that was a napkin math sorry about that but still we're talking about half a minute that you can half a minute sooner you can launch torps on this ship so quite or very very competitive torps in this matter of course them being 66 knots of speed also makes them significantly faster so excellent torps in every single way Gun-wise, well, you can see me already starting some fires and in general using this. Oh, I'm being, I'm being radared by the New Orleans. Now you see I switched to AP. Let's see if it gives me enough broadside. This will have a practical example of exactly what I am talking about in just a second. 
he's still angled so I'm bouncing, I'm slowing down because if he keeps showing like this much broadside he's gonna get wrecked by all my battleships so I'm not really panicking and I do have an island in front of me, I'm expecting him to turn away and I'm saving my guns for that there we go, he's turning oh, only shot my, f not all my guns that was a 5k volley let's see if we can get a proper volley right after there we go, that was a 9k volley, 5k with two citadels you saw that was what, 14k damage? Uh, with the AP. Now, this ship, the one, one thing that makes, of course, this Z23 special is the fact that you can upgrade the guns. From the stock German 128mm guns, you can upgrade them to 150mm. And uh, the reason this is extremely significant is because the base values especially of the AP as you can see gets quite extreme in fact the base potential damage of AP becomes 3.7k per hit so those two citadels just the citadels alone did 7.4k damage and if you happen to land multiple citadels per volley well you can do a huge amount of damage to destroyers well you can also do a huge amount of damage to broadsiding battleships because of course you can pen high, higher on the belt and get heavy heavy damage in that way so the guns are very strong um, you, when you upgrade the 128mm guns, of course, they benefit from AFT and BFT, unlike the 150 ones. But when you upgrade from the 128 to 150, the front turret, which is usually a single gun turret, becomes a double gun turret. So you gain a gun while doing it, which it's obvious they don't want it to end up in some sort of Megami situation where not upgrading the guns back in the day used to be one of the best decisions. It's obvious they want you to upgrade them, and these guns are certainly a huge upgrade. You go from 6% fire chance on the 128mm guns to a beefy 12% on this 150. Now, as some of you can probably figure out, add demolition flag, uh, add demolition flags and DE, and first you bump it to 15, and then with flags to 16. So you can potentially sail around with 16% fire chance on your DD guns, which is, of course, for DD, massive, absolutely massive. Of course. Uh, like German, all German DDs, it does suffer from the reduced smoke duration, so you have the shortest smoke in the game, which is of course considered one of the big balancing factors, uh, which will certainly also limit its uh, impact in competitive and also how many you can bring, because, well, you're not going to be relying on these smokes for a long time at all. However, this heavy fire chance in combination with these torps means that uh, flooding and fires will be very easily accessible to this ship. Now, uh, 3x4 build-wise, there hasn't really been much idea behind it. First of all, you want to reach that competitive concealment. You want to be able to reach the concealment uh, where you can actually actively compete with enemy Bensons and uh, Fubukis, well, in this case, Kageros and so forth. So, and also the other issue, 3x4 builds are recommend, I recommend that on ships that benefit from all three perks, but this ship would only really benefit from Demolition expert and survivability expert. It really gains n next to no benefits from the from AFT and nothing from manual AA because it doesn't have any big caliber anti-air guns. So 3x4 completely out the window on this one. So if you want to run 3x4 in the higher tiers, you're probably much gonna you won't be able to use the same captain and so forth. But then again, it's not a premium ship, so you probably wouldn't anyway. However, the Militian Expert seems to be by far the strongest perk to go for this one. So one of the T10 builds that I was considering of using the range upgrade uh, module, or just the range upgrade to 16%, and then instead of specking AFT, you spec the Militian Expert. That type of build, while leveling, would of course be fantastic on the Z23, which would benefit from it greatly in this fact. So a stealth build with fast torp reload and the Militian Expert, um, could make this quite a juicy competitive pick. Especially, of course, because um, unlike the Kigero, it doesn't have the great stealth, but it's significantly tankier, and it still has great torps. It does have the Hydro Acoustic Surge, which well, I will get into in just a second, and it still has really great gun power, especially starting fires and such. So would not be entirely surprised to see the ship uh, show up in competitive because it certainly has uh, plenty of values, plenty of things that, especially in the current smoke meta, uh, 
Um, the Hydro being able to spot out things. I mean, if you manage to sneak the ship into a position, let's say on the other side of an island of a smoke blob, and you suddenly decide to park there and pop your Hydro, well, that's a good way to really mess with the enemy team. Of course, for those not no noticing, the game I am showing here um, is, of course, a T10 game. You tend to end up against T10s quite often in TA chips. Well, not quite often, but every now and then. And this ship does extremely well against T10s. Because, once again, the firepower, very competitive. Torpedoes, extremely strong and fast. So all of it is pretty great in this matter. You might notice that I popped my Hydra to, to see what was coming around that island. And that's why, why I was able to torp him. The Hydro Acoustic Search, unlike the Lo Yang Hydro, which I will be comparing it to now, the Lo Yang Hydro lasts 90 seconds, this Hydro lasts 96 seconds, so it lasts 6 seconds longer. Um, another matter is you can get one more of it than you can get on the Lo Yang, I think. Uh, with, I'm pretty sure you can get one additional consumable. But most importantly of all, they both have a pretty much identical torpedo detect. Uh, Loyang detects torps at 3.15, you detect torps at 3.12, so that's so 30 meter difference, very, very minimal. However, the ship detection is massively superior. The Loyang detects uh, ships at 3.48 km, uh, the C-23 detects ships at 4.44 km, so that's 900 meters. And, well, actually, no, that's more than that it's only very close to one kilometer it's 960 meters so yeah very close to one kilometer advantage on spotting on spotting ships so one thing this ship pretty much has done in my opinion considering how insanely strong these torps are as well is how fast they are how well concealed they are like they catch people off guard much very very often they're nasty to dodge because of their speed 66 knots is no joke at this tier so, as I said, very competitive against higher tiers as well. So, um, this ship kind of feels like it is putting the Loyang out of business. Because the one thing the Loyang had was the Hydro. I mean, it had US smokes and it had Hydro, but it traded out so much to get the Hydro. The torps were significantly weaker than the Benson torps, and uh, it loses a gun to the Benson, like a lot of trades. And uh, the C-23 trades nowhere near as much. I mean, it doesn't have the smoke, sure, but the Hydra is massively superior, torps are great, guns are great. So, that's a bit of a shame because I really love the Loyang, but I have a very hard time uh, really, like, in any way trying to sell the Loyang to anyone with this ship being introduced to the game, because all the things you can do on the Loyang, all, this, all the Hydro tricks you can do on the Loyang, you can do significantly better on this ship. So, why, why bother with the Loyang anymore? Um, it's a bit of a shame, but I think it's pretty straightforward. The Loyang has been made quite practically useless because of this ship. Now, I'm running Hydra to try and here to help my Montana. You can see a Montana is pushing up, and of course there's Turpets in front of me. I'm gonna pop Hydra right in front. I don't think I need a Hydra myself too much, but of course uh, my friendly the T10 battleship who decides to YOLO in here will benefit greatly from my Hydra. Since once again that 3 kilometer bubble that you, you that you generate where you protect, uh, detect all Torps, as you can see detecting them already from every direction, should help him significantly in actually dodging all this stuff. And here we get to see of course the benefits of the AP, if I could aim at the right spot so I won't get bounces. Um, the AP, of course, you can do pretty meaty. Well, I'm still getting bounces. Can I like hit the right spot? Yeah, this would probably be easier on a, on a Montana. Yeah, I'm still still getting too many bounces on this turpits to be able to accurately show it. But you can do, let's say, three to four k. Well, there, there we had the two point five k volleys, volley. But you can do like pretty consistently these uh, decent AP chunks on them. In this case. HE might even be better. Oh, Udana shows up. Once again, this is of course the power of the Hydro. This is the same thing you often do in the Lo Yang, which is sit in smoke, pop Hydro, and anyone who comes near you dies. And this ship of course does it even better. The long gun reload does kinda impact, impact it a bit. But on the other hand, having really high alpha damage, 
um, but slower reload is pretty useful for dodging shells being shot into your smoke. It's not as easy to pinpoint where a guy is, is in a smoke if you shoot, if you have a long reload. As you can see, this Udalo is struggling to track me because, well, I only shoot every 6.7 seconds, but when I do shoot, it packs a mean punch. And that's the Udalo dead. There's a Lord Young in the back, the Turpits, well, uh, he's gonna burn down, so he's not an issue. Might as well actually pick a fight with the Lord Young. At longer ranges like this, of course, uh, your arcs are far, far superior to USDD arcs. Another reason, of course, why I said this might also be considered incompetitive, it's much stronger at uh, wrecking spotted DDs, helping shoot them from range because, once again, the arcs are significantly better than the USDD arcs, and of course, because the caliber is fairly big, uh, you do a lot of damage per landed volley. Holy dispersion. Okay, you don't usually have that bad dispersion. I don't really know what happened that one volley. Broken torps. See if we can chunk him out a bit more before he bails. I'm just trying to create some distance. This is a, actually a surprisingly close game that we're getting here. And he's pretty much gone, it seems. Here, of course, the turning circle kind of comes in. I'm trying to slow down and make this turn. On a Benson, I'm pretty sure I could um, I could make this turn. But on this ship, 680 meter turning circle versus 570 meter turning circle means I can barely not make the turn. So uh, there will be some adjusting going on, certainly, to play this ship. Um, it's not quite as bad. I think Tashkent has 690 meter turning circle. Don't quote me on that. I'm not entirely certain if that was the case. But uh, it doesn't feel as clumsy as the Tashkent, but it certainly is a lot clumsier than the Benson. There, there, if you're used to the great, great maneuverability, one of the huge strengths, of course, of the Benson, it will take you some adjustment playing this ship. But I still believe this ship will have a place, perhaps not in every map. It might be a bit of a, a, bit of a different pick, but uh, especially against teams that run with very smoke heavy comps, uh, this ship will probably be pretty damn strong because of course this the potential of having 81 second reload on the torps makes it so much stronger at punishing uh, smokes than the Benson. I mean the 30 second difference in torpedo reload cannot be er, like overstated and of course the 66 knots of speed on it means that constantly Having one of these constantly spam in, into the smoke, as well as the potential threat of, let's say, if this was an enemy smoke, if I've managed to park on the other side of the island there, and then I popped Hydra, they would all get spotted, and I would potentially be in a safe position. By the time they could actually deal with me, well, they would just be sitting there completely spotted, which, of course, in a clan war means death. Oh, hey, we have a, yeah, Montana giving us broadside, so now I can switch to AP. Maybe Montana will show us a better example of the type of AP volleys you can pull off. Since I'll, I should be getting more pens here, uh, 3.6 and 1.2, that was 5k I guess. Let's see this, well he'll die before this next volley lands, sadly. But that was uh, a, well not that short of a game really, 158,000 damage. Considering I was it against T10s, I landed 9 torps and it's, you don't, these torps are quite strong, so as I said, not that hard to land them. They are exactly the same torps you have at T10, except you get them, well, not exactly, the T10 torps are 3 knots faster, but other than that, they're pretty much identical. So, for T8, highly competitive torpedoes. Uh, basic speed-wise, I get just beaten out by Typho in his Zao, but other than that, T10, well, pretty much, it was mostly T10 uh, ships in this game, and I still got 2.4k XP, so... The damage wise, 60k from main battery, 25k HE, 35k AP, torps, basically pretty split between torps and guns, and of course two fires worth of damage as well. So this ship, very fun and very competitive, and so far it's been one of the bigger bright spots in the German DD line. In fact, uh, this ship has a whole lot of potential to have some really sick plays done with, done with it, especially with that AP, because you can do pull off a lot of ridiculous lo y YOLO moves on cruisers who like push into your smoke and stuff, and then you just sail past their broadside and you land a 10 to 15k AP volley into their citadel because your AP damage is so goddamn high. So. Z23 definitely gets my recommendation as uh, a very strong and very fun 
uh, German DD. Anyway, let's move on to the build itself. Right, as usual, I will start with the modules. Now, first of all, you really need to get the hull. The hull on this ship adds 4.8k HP. So you literally gain a third additional health just by getting this hull. So massive upgrade. It also gives you some AA, it gives you some rudder shift and all sorts of stuff, but ultimately that huge HP chunk is pretty much must have. Now the range upgrade is pretty good, but I still think getting the guns first is probably the best choice. Um, you, the front turret becomes a double turret, which is what you want, and you gain these big meaty guns. Once you have those, you can get the range upgrade, and finally the torps, which basically are just a 1km range increase. And a 1 knot speed increase, but that's so small it's really not worth mentioning. Consumable wise, you get premium smoke and repair if you can afford it. If you got even more money, then you get premium hydro as well. Highly recommended. Upgrade wise, main armaments what want, aiming system, no need for AA guns because the AA is honestly quite pitiful on it and since you don't have defensive AA and you don't benefit from manual AA, not really worth it in any way. Propulsion mod, you don't want to be losing engine. Uh, here, steering gears is a put possibility but you got 4.5 seconds and you're mostly held back by your turning circle radius not your rudder shift time. So ultimately I chose propulsion mod, it's not necessarily the best one. But since I tend to scavenge friendly smokes a lot, and I tend to try to use smokes a lot so I can actually use my guns, I enjoy it. Concealment module is the last one to get that 6.2 km stealth. Now the captain I'm using right now, um, well basic firing training if you plan on leveling up using this captain on T9 and T10. Because of course the 128mm guns at the higher tiers benefit from it. But otherwise basic survivability is the best for this ship itself because once again 150mm guns do not benefit from this one, so kind of pointless. Last stand, of course, superintendent, once again, of course, because you get so many consumables with it. Demolition expert, once again, the best choice if you intend to stick to this ship, and potentially, if when you go to the T9 and T10, you go for the build where you use the range module instead of the reload module, and uh, then you spec DE instead, that's also a possibility, so, but for a purely Z23 captain, demolition expert is absolutely must have. Concealment expert, Final, highly recommended, 17 points, torpedo armament, and finally with the last point we could basically put it into basic firing training for slightly better AA or something. The last point is kind of pointless on this ship in that case. But anyway, that was my C23 commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it, because I personally enjoyed the ship quite a bit.